So today's topic is about parallel actions for workflow. So there are many cases that we need a kind of parallel action or take actions, or assign action and take action to complete one task. We are going into in that kind of things today. And also at the end, we have a kind of bonus form by Don about paging XTP. So let's start the presentation. Okay, yep. So, well, if you'd like to complete one business process, you may need several action. And in many time, each assigned person can take action in parallel. So, this is a little bit different from basic SharePoint mm -hmm, workflow, but mm, we will show you one sample how to implement this kind of business process. So, each action has description and assignees, due date, mm -hmm, and that's the <coughs> area we'd like to talk about today. So, this is a kind of sample. Let's see after this webinar what we have to do. For example, maybe I think I have to prepare a webinar package or done, create it. And I'm going to upload the video to YouTube. And Parachi is going to send that package to you guys. And also we need to update website information. This is very simple, and we do not have to control that kind of thing using form. However, I think this is an easy example to understand. So, what kind of tool or component we are going to use? Of course, this solution is based on a SharePoint, and as you are familiar with, we have one mother form library for keep everything, and we have child list to have each items, each action items in it, like a task and assignee information and due date and so on. And we are using InfoPass form as usual. And today, I assume using QWRQ rules. There are two very useful commands in the Q rules, which is most popular, I think. And many of you are already familiar with that. That is called submit to SharePoint list. This is submit multiple list item from form. And also another one is called refresh SharePoint list item which is a kind of reverse, get the update in list into the form. And also to control the mapping, we are going to use InfoPass to SharePoint list tool. And also use SharePoint the designer workflow to send email to assignees and the registers and so on. So maybe it's easier to see the demo than hearing something. So we are going to start some demonstration. Mm -hmm. Okay, let me go to this site. This is the demo site, and I'm going to start a new form on action workflow. Mm -hmm. So this is the form we are showing today. So I am going to submit the project. I'd say web post process. Mm -hmm. And this is on demo, for example. Mm, package it and hmm. Oh, all right. 
Full screen. Mm -hmm. Okay. Is this better? <laughs> Thanks, Parachi, for input. She mentioned it's a little bit too small to see. <laughs> Prepare video. And set the package to attendees. I'm going to select this assigning me and Prachi and saving Let's say tomorrow for now. In general, we do everything on today. Here is. Mm -hmm. And just for demo, <laughs> demo purpose, I have a kind of debug information underneath the form. And I'm going to submit this form. Yep. Mm -hmm. Then if I go back to the form, now I have new form item here, just modified. And in another list items, I have three new items here, as you see the form. So this is the first phase. Then I'm going to take action. So I and I hope I'm going to receive, yes, I get an email notification on this one. So this is from SharePoint workflow with some items, description, project, and we have link here to open the form. Okay, so let me first take action for one form. Mm -hmm. And I will ask Parachi later, not now yet, <laughs> to take the, another action in parallel. So now I am taking action. Mm -hmm. Complete it. Mm -hmm. So just open one item and action, take this action. Okay. And then, oh, not this one. If you see this form, here is an action count. We have three actions, and one of these actions is done. And also, in the child list, you cannot see this action package. The tool is now completed by myself. All right. Then, that is straightforward. Then, let's go to the next phase. Now. I am going to open the form, and the Parachi is also going to open the form background. Mm -hmm. Are you ready? <laughs> and I am going to take action for the third one. And the Parachi, you are all right to take action for the second, mm -mm, second one, which is assigned to you. Oh, it's reverse that. Now, Parachi, please take action for prepare videos for YouTube and upload it. I assigned that to you today. <laughs> and mm -hmm. package sent 
Okay. And Parachi, can you send me the Skype message if you've done? Oh, yes. Now she finished <coughs> to take her action. So I'm taking action. Mm -hmm. And if I submit all of this my sub form, then I am override what Parachi will just submit it. So let's see. I'm going to take action here. The point is, I just submit the one only the one only more only modified by me in this one so now after i submit i get that latest information again so here you see the parachis input that was done so great mm -hmm. back to the form now we can see all three of three actions is done and the actions the form status is now action complete and also mm -hmm, in a sub list everything mm -hmm, is up to date and this one is modified mm -hmm, by parach so let me explain a little bit more about the mm -hmm, Hmm. Development fact, yes. So, again, let's go back to submit to SharePoint list. Very, very useful command in a Q rules. And mm -hmm, I found this line in the spec, which said, you can map a filtered group in the mapping tool for the repeating group by specifying some condition on repeating group. So instead of mapping everything, I can just specify, yes, I modified this one. So just submit the modified one. That's the one I use. So when I take action on this tiny button, I set modified flag as yes. And when I take action, only for this column is submitted. So it is a bit more complicated command. So for to implement this kind of thing, please read this mm -hmm, guideline. And this will show you how to do that. And in fact, you have to add that condition manually. So from someone, some of you already familiar with that tool called InfoPath to SharePoint list tool. And because we have to define fetch field in InfoPath to be mapped to fetch field to SharePoint column, this tool helps you. And one tip for today is you can specify the filtering. So this is a kind of diagram, what I did. Mm -hmm. So in the case of submit, we I use submit to SharePoint as usual. So it submit every column, every action item I registered to the child list. And I submit the main list. But when I take action, I sub use submit to SharePoint for modified only. Then after that, use using refresh SharePoint item. Then I get other others feedback or others mm -hmm, other items that was submitted by others. Then I can check well how many actions completed and can modify the status in mother library. That's the ma major idea. And also, mm -hmm, we add some workflow using SharePoint Designer. And when mm -hmm, the form is submitted, I send emails, uh, email to responder email list. And the nice thing is, you know that I have two tasks assigned, two action items assigned. But I just got one email 
because <laughs> this is merged in SharePoint designers, how to say SharePoint site. And also, we usually set the email notification when action is completed. Also, just another tip to create the email with form link. I guess about half of you are already familiar with the technique. But um, maybe not, so I put the tips in the PowerPoint slide. So you can look up this when you got the PowerPoint. So to set the link, first I suggest you to copy the URL, open the file, open the submitted form, and copy the URL. And this is something like that. HTTP and your site, pass to library, and using form ID. So make sure you have form ID in form. Then use this to create the list. So this is about the parallel form. And we have one more tiny topic. It is bonus form about paging XTP. So I'm going to hand this to Don. So one moment, please. I'm going to make Don as presenter. Great. Oh, uh, now, I can, now I can see your screen. Okay. Um. Uh. Thanks, Kaoru. Um, mm -hmm. uh, may I know which, which screen are you seeing? Are you seeing my Skype, or just the background? I think it's background, <laughs> blue okay. earth and the universe. <laughs> oh, that's okay. So, thank you. So um. Uh, uh, hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Don, and uh, I've been with Kidabra for uh, uh, over two years now. And uh, today I'm going to show you a uh, bonus demo regarding on um, the uh, paging XTP that we have been using. <clears throat> Excuse me. So um, uh, for forms that uh, has a hard the action that we that has so much um affect the form's performance because of the loading time it's going to uh, uh, create when showing the data. So uh, one good uh, technique you could use is uh, by paging. So uh, what we have here is the uh, uh, paging XTP. So I'm going to uh, demo first and show you how it uh, mm -hmm. looks like. Oh, Don, maybe because of the internet bandwidth, we cannot hear you very well. So can you speak a little bit slowly? Oh, okay. Sorry about that. How is this? Is my voice better? Yeah, a bit better. Okay. Uh, sorry about that. Okay. So, uh, so here I have um, a sample uh, form which has uh, around 50 rows and uh, if you're uh, working with a form that has more it's going to affect your form's performance so um, you click on this button this is going to start the paging so by default it is set to uh, 20 rows and you can see there's the page count right here if you click on the next button, it's going to move to the uh, next pages. Or you could also select which page you want to dis display. Okay, so um, this uh, sample form, uh, which we will be, uh, be giving away later on, uses a default data. It uses uh, this one, the field one, field two, and an index. Now I'm going to um, show you how to add this to a um, 
an existing form and if you want to use it on a, a row that is from or a repeating group that is from a, uh, a data connection. So I'm going to open up this uh, form which already has and if I run it, it's going to query a lot of data. Oh, what we do is determine how many rows are returned first. So, in order for us to do uh, to do that, mm -hmm. uh, let me see. speak slowly, please, Don. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, we're going to use a um, a field that that is not being used, which you will not display on your um, uh, on your canvas. So, add this. I created a rule that that will itself to the value of uh, count with the uh, function preceding sibling of the current repeating table. That's going to be this one, the share list item, and plus one. That is going to trigger the count. Now, I am going to add the trigger action here. As you can see, uh, it's going to run if new spy is equal to count. So I will add that action here to this button and uh, spike is equal to the value of count. Now if we preview this, uh, we are now going to determine how many rows So this is the column that we as a total of 108 rows. Now what we're going to do next is add the XTP to the form. So go to the uh, control section of the home tab and add the XTP control. already have it here so I'm just going to remove it for now and show you how it's done it's how to okay so again click this section click add or remove custom control and the FTP which is a template part click next and browse for the of the XCP Okay, open, finish, and close. Now we already have it here, and it should be here. Now, uh, what you should do next is uh, put place your cursor to the uh, location where you want to add the uh, paging XTP control. Now, click on the uh, paging XTP you have it. This are actually buttons 
it looks pretty, pretty nice. And we have a bunch of rules. Now, what we're going to do next is follow the steps written here. The paging section out of the template part section. So this is the section which is inside the uh, paging uh, template part section. So we're just going to uh, cut that and paste that here and delete this uh, template part section. After uh, we're going to delete the section that has been created here at the uh, schema. And then click on the page number at the uh, paging logic data connection. Or you can just click on this one. Now, there are going to be your rules here. Click on the uh, set page values. And click on the rule that, or the action that um, uh, first action here that is for the page count. And copy the item uh, posted here. Click on the uh, FX button and paste the formula. For this repeating group, we are going to replace this to the actual repeating group that we will that we are going to use, which in this case is the uh, repeating group from the data connection. Now, click on verify formula. There you go. We already have. Now, uh, if you run this, you will have. Oh, sorry. Um, let me just. Add one more thing. Uh, we just also need to set the uh, page number. That is we set zero. So page one. If if we run this, you will now see the uh, paging controls. But uh, one problem is that you will still need to add the hide formatting for the uh, repeating group. And you can see but the paging control is already working. So to add this up, to hide the rows which we really don't need, you just need to add a formatting rule which hides this control or hides the uh, repeating group row. And let's name it something uh, meaningful. Hide previous row. And click on the condition wherein we were using this as the uh, node that counts how many rows. And it's less than start of the paging logic XTP. Next, add another rule, formatting rule, which hides the next rows. Click on the hide this control checkbox. And again, click select the uh, new spike, which is the uh, node for counting the rows and is greater than page end of the uh, paging XTP control. Now, uh, because info path is being funny, this is not going to work. What you need to do is uh, replace replace the uh, You'll need to uh, replace the formula. So from page start, get the expression, and then post it on a notepad. And again, uh, I'll post it again so that you'll see what's happening. I'm going to remove this portion and the uh, closing parenthesis. 
and add the uh, comparison here, comparison log or the operator. And again, select the expression and paste it there. Hmm. It's still going to be the same, but this is the formula which is going to work for the page in XDP. Hmm. So again, we're going to uh, get the expression and perform the same uh, steps. This time we're going to use greater than and post it here. Now we're going to uh, move the rules to the formula so that there is no need to um, click this button to trigger everything. And we're going to move that and click on uh, preview. So everything is there. Uh, everything should start up now, and the pageant should now um, the 20. We have 20 rows. If we click on the next button, we're going to next see the next the uh, this button here. It's going to bring us to the last page, and this will bring us to the first page. So um, that is it for the uh, paging XCP. Uh, I hope you were able to um, catch everything and uh, uh, that's it. Mm -hmm. I'm passing the mic again okay. to you, Alan. Thank you, Don. Oh, by the way, uh, mm -hmm. does anyone have any questions regarding the uh, XCP? Mm -hmm. Oh, yes. Mm hmm. Mm. Uh, question is, does paging work on web forms? Yes, actually it does. I have yeah. done this on a couple of uh, forms already and it works mm -hmm. perfectly. Yep. Now, um, one, the best thing about the paging is that it uh, increases the form's performance, especially, especially if you are dealing with uh, thousands of rows. So what you're going to do is display the first batch of forms. Now, we, you, uh, by the way, uh, you could edit mm -hmm. uh, paging or the, the number, the length of the page here if you export the paging logic XML. And then let's view it in Notepad here. That will you want to increase this to 150 or whatever you want. You just have to um, uh, change this part and re-upload this to the uh, uh, XSM. Mm -hmm. All right. All right. Thanks very much, Don. Mm -hmm. You are going to get this bonus XDP2, I think, if you answer the feedback for today's webinar. So let me take control again and mm -hmm, show my screens, all right? Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm, any, any question about mm -hmm, today's presentation? It's question time. Mm -hmm. I haven't get any question yet, I think. And oh, just one tip on implementing the refresh SharePoint. This is a kind of tricky behavior of SharePoint as you all know. We have a kind of data, date data type here, but even if you set the type as a date only in a SharePoint list, if we get that data using mm -hmm, refresh SharePoint, SharePoint returns you with date, with time, like an 0000. So it may cause validation error in your form. So to avoid this one, mm -hmm, now I am using data type. As string in SharePoint side, 
and using data point date and <clears throat> form site. <clears throat> That's one additional tip. <laughs> All right. Seems no additional question. Does does paging on? Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. I hope. You enjoy the presentation, and also we have other presentation, a webinar planning in September. So thanks very much for attending today's webinar, and please fill in the feedback form, and you will get the sample form. Thank you very much, and I hope you enjoy the rest of the day. Goodbye.